This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Med Canadian Barbecue Company. The Med Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Med Canadian will be in Cary this Thursday, October 28th at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria for some barbecue and bingo. So get, go get yourself some barbecue. Enjoy a good round or two of bingo. <laughs> Again, over at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria, 4 to 7 o'clock. Or this Sunday, Halloween, at the Fall Craft Show up at the Wyandotte County Fairgrounds up in Upper Sandusky from noon to 4. Again, noon to 4, Sunday, Upper Sandusky. Get some barbecue. Check out the Mad Canadian social media sites for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium, small batch, roast order, veteran owned coffee company. Uh, their coffee is world class, hand roasted, micro batch coffee. And it is roasted once again to your order. I said that twice. Why? Because it's how important it is. Especially if you're not someone who's going to be doing like home grinding of your beans. If, if that's not something, you know, it just I, some people just aren't going to are going to do that. Right. So if you're not going to do that, what you're going to want is the freshest possible grind. So if you're buying ground, all that spiel I normally go over about how important it is to have your coffee fresh, roast, fresh roasted. It's way more important to have it fresh ground. Because once it gets ground, it starts to lose all those oils. So what you don't want is a coffee that's been sitting around in a truck and in a warehouse and on a shelf for weeks and months on end. You want to get your coffee fresh roasted, fresh ground, delivered to your doorstep straight from Toledo, Ohio. And you can get all of that from the Iron Bean Coffee Company. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. I think that's a bad idea, Gangland. Put coffee, coffee in, in olive oil. oil. Mm. That's a, that's a bad idea. I would I would not recommend that. I agree. I agree. I am also for grinding my own beans, bros. Uh, you know, this is this is iron this bean. Is a, iron bean gives good, you. This is the good time of the year here, Jared. Um, we're getting to the second half of college football here. High school football playoffs are, are this next weekend here. I know there's a bunch of hockey fans as well. So, yeah, this is this, I is, did this, is, a, this is a great time of the year right now. So with that being said, let's let's start the show, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing pretty well here, Jared. How are you doing today? Good, sir. Uh, you know, Ohio State is 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 looking like the Ohio State that we always want them to be. So uh, I don't want to waste any time. Uh, football has me in a good mood right now. So let's go ahead and um, get this get to our uh, episode of uh, standard and grade started let's grade the team let's answer some questions let's talk about the game that was uh in bloomington this saturday or last saturday rather yeah absolutely uh for those um that were living under a rock ohio state defeated indiana hoosiers i don't think we did that last episode uh, we 54, did 54 to you even used seven you even turned the oh, reverb yes, on and everything. It was great. I did, yes. 54 to 7. <clears throat> 44 of those points coming into the first half when Ohio State just let off the gas and only scored 10 points the second half. But it's it's the first half we have to talk about here, Jared. It man, this this Ohio State team, as you as you mentioned in the um while the Music was playing and for on the YouTube only here, just Ohio State's just hitting it on all cylinders offensively right now. And defensively, they're finding their groove. They're finding their identity right now, holding Indiana to 128 total yards. Granted, they were playing their third, fourth, fifth, sixth, whatever quarterback in this game. Yeah. But still, 128 yards total for the game, not, not in one half, not in 
three quarters, the entire game, 128 yards. Yeah, um, as we all know, Penix was out. And what you, you know, then on top of that, Tuttle got hurt. Was it game, or excuse me, drive two for them? Uh, maybe no. it was drive three when was, Tuttle got first, hurt? It, no, it was the first drive when he when he threw that touchdown. It was drive the, one. And in, in Indiana's only touchdown is when right. he got hit hard. Uh, he, he, did, he, he did. He did come back in for another drive, but then he he was done after that. Yeah, gang, Gangland reminded me it was it was the touchdown pass. Because in my mind, he had completed drive one, which which he did. Uh, it's just that, yeah, um, yeah. He he did come back in, but not for very long, as Kyle pointed out. They they brought in the true freshman, and he 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 just wasn't he wasn't there yet and his offensive line wasn't helping him out and his wide receivers weren't helping him out and he was a true freshman quarterback with no you know little to no preparation because he wasn't supposed to be starting and he has no Mm -hmm. experience and Ohio State was all over him and the offensive line was not helping him and I you know it's almost to the point where you feel bad for the kid (laughs) like it really, it really got that bad. Um, yep. The, yeah, it, it, when it comes down to it, Ohio State completely dominates this game top to bottom. Offense and defense outside of that first drive where where Indiana did look pretty good. Um, maybe there's an alternative version of this game where Tuttle doesn't get hurt and Indiana scores more points. Uh, I was expecting Indiana to score like 17 points. Um Kyle, what what was your, or was it no? You said seventeen. I said twelve or thirteen something. I it had doesn't here. Yeah, I had here. I think it was like fourteen points. Um, I'm trying to look it up here. Yeah, I think uh, 14, 17, 14, 17 points. It was something something around yeah. there. So it was Ohio State. I think. Even, we had high expectations going into this game. I think sort of to sum up what we were saying in Know Your Enemy, we were kind of anticipating a repeat of the Rutgers game and the Maryland game. And I would say it, I would say it looked even better than that. I, you know, you still had a situation yeah, where Stroud played one or two drives in the third quarter. Uh, you had a situation like with Maryland and like with Rutgers, where each team actually got a really good drive in in the first half. Um, I, I think it played out a lot like that, except I think the offense was clicking even more than normal. Like the yeah. offense was on another level this game. Like they just couldn't they couldn't not score. Well, and that's exactly what they did. They scored every time the offense got their hands on the ball there. Um, in the first half here, Jared, Ohio State, 334 total yards to Indiana's 54. In that in that first half there. And that, and that, that summed up the entire and that summed up the entire game there. Um our our, our players to watch here, it was um who did you have for for Indiana's player to watch? Do you, do you recall? Um, I had the. Um, <laughs> of course, I'm going to blank on names. Um, uh, the wide receiver, uh, uh, Fry oh, Fogel. Ty. Yeah, Fry Fogel. Fry Fogel. So, so Fry Fogel had a total of one catch, one catch for thirty yards, and then my and then my yeah. player. My player was five was um, Hendershot, who had five catches and the only score for the Hoosiers. If I if I knew that Tuttle was also going to go out, I probably would have picked the tight end as well. Uh, but but shout, <laughs> yeah. shout out to the cornerbacks who yes. kept the wide receivers for Indiana completely in check. Um, yeah, that, that, you that had means- Hendershot with five catches and everybody else on the entire team in total had three catches. Yeah, that, that's their other three wide receivers with three catches there. That's hats off there. So I, I, let's just start with the defense here as we're, we're grading. Doing okay, our let's grading start with the here. defense. Let's, let's switch just it up. Start, let's, let's start right there with the cornerbacks. We're just going out of order here. The cornerbacks here, I'm going to give them an A-plus here. This game, this game yeah. they did everything right there other than the one 
the one mistake where they didn't get Henderson shot. Um, was but that, it the corners think, very, think, but the corners almost never cover the tight end. Yeah, so I, I'd give. Oh, it was Simon. Yes, it was Simon. Um, but yeah, I'd give the I'd give the corners an A plus here. You can't Absolutely. ask for much more than other than trying to get a turnover. Which surprisingly, Jared, in this game, zero turnovers in this game, zero turnovers for for Gosh. how. For, for for it raining pretty much the entire game, their ball was slippery. There was some slips from Indiana um, uh, Donovan who who slipped on a few few runs there, but yeah, no turnovers in that game, which was really surprising. He did keep it PG, Stewart. He he just used the TF. <laughs> that is PG. <laughs> All right. So if we're giving um, the defense, if we're giving Kyle, the defense, if we're giving the you, you want to say you facts. wanted the corners to get a to get a turnover. I figure this one out in a game in which Indiana was behind basically the entire football game. They attempted the quarterbacks Tuttle seven attempts, McCulley six attempts. Gremmel, who was the walk on who came in for a couple plays, four attempts. That's it. They, they, they had 17 passing attempts as it goes down in the books because of Ohio State getting a number of sacks and forcing runs. And so, I mean, a lot of the pass plays never really even became pass plays. And Indiana just wasn't even really on the field that much. And again, especially if we're talking about the first half, if we're mm-hmm. talking about the first half. Um, Kyle, do we have time of possession for the first half? I do. Give me one second here. I actually have that right up here. Time of possession, Jared. For in the first half, um, Indiana, fifteen minutes twenty two seconds. Ohio State, fourteen thirty eight. Okay, never mind. I was expecting that to be lopsided on Ohio State side. Of course, Ohio State scored very quickly, so I, I don't know. May, may, maybe, maybe not. But point is, is that I just don't feel like Indiana, even though the Time well, of possession was 50 50, had the ball all that much. You're, you're right, Jared. So, two minutes, 56 seconds, 29 seconds, minute 47, 243, 133. Oh, and actually, their first drive was their longest one, which was five minutes and 10 seconds. Yeah. Other than that, everything was under three minutes. All right, Kyle. So, yeah, uh, corners get, get an A. Plus. Safeties? Think, yeah, A plus as well. They didn't. Yeah. They didn't. Leave, they didn't really leave anything. Um, really get past them there. A lot of playing. A lot of just one safety in this in this matchup that I that I saw. There was there was quite a bit of um, one deep, but you know what? It, it worked. It worked in this game here. So yeah, A plus. I wish. I wish Stewart. <laughs> what did Stewart say? No, no, just. Just back on track, Kyle. Back on track. How'd the linebackers do? Uh, the linebackers, I'd give them an A. I, th- I thought overall the linebackers did really well. I, I give them an A there. Not, not giving, I'm giving, not giving them that plus because of that slight mistake letting Indiana score that one touchdown. So I'll, I'll give them an A. Yep. And if we want to move on to the defensive line, I feel like for the first time this year, I don't feel like grading the defensive ends and the defensive tackles differently, which is a thing Mm -hmm. we've been doing all year. Like in our actual chart that we have in our show notes, it still just says DL, but I have all, we've been breaking out the defensive tackles and the defensive ends all year because the defensive tackles have been outplaying the defensive ends, but I don't feel like that was the case. I thought they both completely brought it this game. A plus a plus from the defensive line here. You held Indiana 48 yards on 37 attempts, 1.3 yards per attempt. Yeah. A plus. And then if I'm looking more stats here, uh, I got to go here. Officially, Jared, five sacks, which felt like they had more than they had more than five sacks. But I don't know how that's possible. But the team as a whole had 14 tackle for losses. Yeah. 14 tackles for loss is insane. That is, yes. So A plus, A plus all across the board here. 
and then, and then we'll give special teams in, in A as well. Not the A plus because I'm still waiting for that that touchdown still. <laughs> but they did get a safety. <laughs> they did. They did. But I'm still I'm still not holding. I'm still holding. No miss kicks. Plus. I'm still holding on to that plus. <laughs> Kyle's not going to give it to I you guys. That. Guys, I was trying to advocate for you. If, if any Ohio State special teamers are watching, I was attempting to advocate for you. Kyle's going to hold out for that return touchdown. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I am. I'm I sorry, am. guys. Yep, that's exactly. Exactly, gangland. All right, offensively here, Jared. Offensively, let's start Start with the slobs. Let's, let, let's start with the slobs here. They've only let they let up. Was it officially one? Yeah, only one sack in the Kyle, game. Do you, mm-hmm. do you want to do an ad break before we do the offensive line? Before we move on to the offensive side? Uh, a little early, but yeah, sure. Let's yeah, it's just let's it's a little bit it. early. All right, let's let's go ahead and do it. All right, the I'll go All ahead right. and start us off here, Jared. Uh, oh, the okay. McKinney, <laughs> McKinney Barbecue Company. I mentioned that it'll be be up in Cary this Thursday from 4 to 7 and this Sunday on Halloween they'll be up in Upper Sandusky at the Wyandotte County Fairgrounds from 12 to 4. Check out his social media, uh, Facebook and Twitter for more information about him and his food truck. I mean, what, what more What more can we say about the Mad Canadian? you got great guy running running the, the grill or the, the barbecue there. It's made that day no no making the making the meat the day before it's all made that morning everything is fresh barbecue is great just whenever you have a chance go up go up there and get some get some of that good old med canadian barbecue food med canadian barbecue company who are the official barbecue of the Cary high school blue devils this episode of the sloopcast also brought to you by the iron bean coffee company kyle i hopped on the iron bean coffee company site and I'll be gosh darned. It looks like there's a sale. Uh, as I am recording this Sunday night, you can currently get two dollars off of a drink from the skull of your enemy bag, a bag of cast iron, of integrity, of the Thor, of the fear no evil, the Loki and the Odin. Those are all currently on sale. Um Again, I hope I hope that's still the case when you are listening to this. But on a Sunday night, uh, those coffees are all on sale. You can get two dollars off per bag. Um, and it looks like the fierce ride or die and rage against the dying of the light K cups are also two dollars off. Uh, you get 12 K cups and you get uh, two dollars off of that sale. And uh, checking in on some of those. Other coffees. Uh, it looks like those are the ones. Those are the ones currently on sale. Those are the ones currently on sale. So you can go uh, check those out. If maybe you are waiting to save a couple dollars here or there, you can hop over to IronBeanCoffee.com and get a little bit of get a little bit off your order there. And if you find the one that you love, you can do a subscribe and save and continue to save money uh, as as the time as the time moves on. So, like I said, go find your new favorite coffee over at IronBeanCoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, offensive grading here, Jared. As I mentioned, let's let's start with the slobs here. The, the slobs only only let up one sack for the game, but paved the road for 187 yards for this um for this rushing attack here for us for Ohio State. They didn't really need to do a lot, but man, they gave Stroud so much time and and even McCord and Miller to an extent too. All the time that they need to to throw the ball. Was the sack in the second half? I, I want to say the sack was in the second. Half. Yeah, it was. It was on Stroud. Um, yep. And I want to say most, if not all of the uh, starting five were, were still in at that point. Um, so, I, you know, I think we still got to count that. But uh, as Kyle points out, you know, you have to give uh, huge props to the offensive line for what we saw out of the running game. Uh, we'll talk about the running backs here in a moment. But Henderson, nine yards a carry. Mine Williams, seven and a half yards a carry. Um, you know, CJ Stroud takes only one sack on the game. He had a clean pocket 
almost the entire game. Uh, a dumb penalty did cost Ohio State a touchdown, but they ended up getting the touchdown right back on uh, a co- it was either the next play or a couple plays later. So um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ding the offensive line too bad for that. Um, so I made a couple complaints there, Kyle, but I'm really nitpicking. Just for the record, I am super. Be- I'm being hyper nitpicky because yes. I, you know, we've already handed out several A pluses. And I don't want that to become too cheap. So maybe I'm trying to talk myself into an A, but I thought they played excellently. Yeah, I'll give I, I'll give them an A. Played excellent. And especially that first drive, like you, you saw the offensive line and just how they just manhandled this, this Indiana uh, defense. And this defense, what was it? A couple of games ago? I got, I got to pull up real quick. This defense um, really held, yeah, it was the game before, really held Michigan State, who actually it was moving the ball quite a bit um, this season, held Sparty to, what is it here, 100 yards for the game, yeah. 2.9 yards for the... 2.9 yards per rushing temp for Sparty. So this was a this was a good Indiana defense and Ohio State had their way with them. Yeah, like do do not let go back and listen to Know Your Enemy. Cause I think we were trying to to hype up Indiana a bit. You know, their only losses have come to teams who Either uh, every team they lost to was in the top 10 at the time they lost to them, except for Iowa, who wasn't in the top 10 yet, but would 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 get there. And Mm -hmm. I think currently is. I don't know. I don't I'm not I haven't paid tons of close attention to the AP poll, but if they're not, they're just outside the top 10. Indiana has only lost to top 10 teams. Uh, Penn State has fallen like way out at this point. But but when Indiana played Penn State, they had Clifford. And, you know, we'll be talking about Sean Clifford a lot this week. Um, he, he, you know, well, he did play last last Sunday or last Saturday, but um, he's not himself. But Indiana got healthy Sean Clifford, and that's not something that Iowa got, and that's not something that Illinois got. Uh, it's uh, Indiana's defense is... Act, I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to. Oh, my God, they're amazing. They're the blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to try and overhype them, but they held a healthy Sean Clifford in Penn State to was it 24 points held Michigan State to 20 points. This is not some shamble defense. And Ohio State ramshackles them. You know what I mean? Made them look irrelevant. Made. Indiana's defense looked completely irrelevant. It, were, it looks like they're running their their. It's like they're doing their walkthroughs against the scout team defense. That's what yeah. they made Indiana look like. And I promise you, they are not that bad. That was just Ohio State executing. That That's what Ohio State will look like when they're executing the way they are. Yep. Tight ends here, Jared. Two uh, tight yeah. Two, t- two touchdowns by Jeremy Ruckert in this game had five catches for 47 yards here. Uh, and we also had a Cade Stover reception. Yes, we did. Yep. Uh, Jeremy you- Ruckert uh, almost leads the team in receptions. Uh, Smith and Njimba did have six. But uh, Jeremy Ruckert was, uh, ha- had something that neither uh, Wilson nor Smith and Njimba had. And he had two mm-hmm. of them. He had some touchdowns. Yeah, so there was a total of seven, um, seven, seven, yep, seven catches by by the tight ends here. Five for Ruckert, Stover had one, and Joe Royer, I think is everyone's new favorite tight end slash uh, fullback, <laughs> had a catch How as dare well. You. <laughs> yes, the the uh, the Afro tight end, yes. Oh no, you're right. Yes, Rose, it was Rossi had it. Sorry, not Royer. I apologize. I thought didn't Royer also have? I thought Royer had one, or did he? Or nope, did he that, drop that's it? Actually, nope. That's actually his first catch as a Buckeye. That was his first catch. Uh let's see. Someone asked it. So, well, so would you give the tight ends an A plus then here? Jared? Uh, sh- yeah. 
then you know you have to give them credit for what happened in the running game as well mm -hmm. all right all right wide receivers jared what would you give the wide receivers in this game here um i, I mean they suck they're terrible i hate them uh they should have never let jameson williams i'm kidding of course uh yeah it's what <laughs> What else can you say? They when they were open, they were open by a mile. When they got the ball, they made people miss. Yep. Uh, Wilson had a drop, um, uh, a pretty ugly drop. Um, I'm again, but, I, I'm attempting the nitpick here. I'm really doing but, my but best to made, nitpick here. He he made it up that right, next right on the next play, play. Right on the next on the play. Next play. <laughs> So uh, I don't know, like I, I'm trying really hard not to just be handing out A's like I'm Oprah with cards, but yeah. I, I don't know what else to do here because the game, while the starters were in through that first half, Ohio State was just outside of one drive on defense. Ohio State was just flawless. Yeah. And 11, he, he threw it to 11 different receivers in this game. It wasn't like what we typically see is like, oh, there's five receivers that that Ohio State quarterbacks just throw it to. And it's a Wilson or Lave had like eight catches each. No, it was all spread out. Six, five, five, two, 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 one, 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 one. So it was pretty evened out. Which is what you'll see because... To they had the backups in for most of the second half, but mm -hmm. yeah, Mar Mar Marvin Harrison jr. Had a couple of catches. He had a, he had a highlight there with his, with his um, B button there. And Emeka had a couple of catches as well. And, and man, you, you just feel one of these times, one yeah. of these times he's going to break it here. Here's the other, I know people love the spin move from Marvin Harrison jr. I liked the other play more because it reminded me of his dad a bit because he it caught did, he yes. caught a ball over the middle and someone hit him and he just sort of bounced and kept going. And I his dad would do the same thing all the time. Um, he has uh, who, uh, Buckeye Zach says down in the chat, Harrison could be even better than his dad. He has better measurables. He's taller. He's faster. And then he also just has the benefit of having his dad be his dad and all of the financial benefits that come with that all of the knowledge that comes with that like marvin harrison jr has the unfair advantage of having marvin harrison of as his dad that's one thing marvin harrison didn't have um so yeah i do think that marvin harrison jr has the potential to be I mean, the potential, the potential, the potential. Marvin Harrison Jr. or Marvin Harrison Sr., one of the best to ever do it. Uh, one of the absolute best to ever play wide receiver in the NFL. So, I mean, let's let's slow down a bit. But the, the comparisons are unavoidable for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. So a give the wide receivers an A here. Running backs here. Running backs had. 32 rushing attempts, 187 yards for the game, 5.8 per per rush there, and, and three touchdowns for the game here. Can can ask, um, well, and, and I think the important thing too, with it being rainy, zero fumbles as well. Uh, That's a good yeah, point. I, I, I'd give him I'd give him an A here. Uh, Henderson Henderson uh, got two touchdowns. Uh, Chop got a got the first touchdown of the game there at just a solid performance with the uh, with the Ohio State running backs. Henderson left the I don't even know who the announced crew was. I forget. I, and even I actually it's not that I forget. I just I just don't think I knew. Um, but he he left the announcers speechless. On several occasions, just left them absolutely speechless. Um, yeah. I think there's a really good Henderson question coming up and ask ask Sloopcast. So I think we'll, we'll come to that when we get a chance mm -hmm. to. Um, so an A, so an A, a plus, a, a plus. I give All them right. the plus. They they looked unstoppable. Well then, well then, uh, you have to give the same grade to C.J. Stroud then. As give well. the same grade to C.J. Stroud. What what else do you want at this point? I mean, yeah. C.J. Stroud is <laughs> he made his best throw of his college career on Saturday. 
Ooh, it was that, that post over the middle. He put it in a narrow window. He put it ex there. It was it was it was perfect. It was an NFL throw. Um, he's getting better. And he's getting better and he's getting better. We were nowhere near the peak of CJ Stroud yet. And that should have everyone who is not an Ohio State fan very concerned. Um, he's getting there. He's really, really getting there. Uh, and he's he's a pocket guy who throws the ball or who runs the ball. Sometimes I think we saw him scramble only once this game. It wasn't needed because he had open wide receivers and a clean pocket and his running backs were running well. He didn't need to run. So he didn't. He, like I said, I think he took off once. Uh, yeah, well, he should have two rushing stats, Kyle, one sack and one run. No, he yeah. has three. A third one came somewhere. He must have scrambled a third time. Um, but yeah, regardless, CJ Strat, yeah, CJ Stroud, 75 percent passing um, 266 didn't have to throw the ball um, a ton down the field there. Four touchdowns, zero interceptions for the game. Can't ask for much more there unless you're unless you're Stewart, who expects um, expects him to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, every yeah, throw. yeah. Uh, so, OK, uh, according to some people, get, this is gangland. According to some people, all he has to do is establish the threat. I'm not. Oh, no. OK, you're 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 being facetious. Gotcha. Um yeah, no, it's I, I'm interested to see what he does. I'm interested to see what he I am interested to see what he does against the better defenses, against the the Michigans, the Michigan States and the Penn States. When he gets a little bit of pressure on him, presumably what you know, presumably when he gets a little bit of pressure on him and, you know, maybe the wide receivers aren't quite as open, but we're seeing him make narrow throws now. We're seeing him mm -hmm. make really good throws now so we'll get there we'll see but i i i have i have faith mm, yep all right so overall the worst the worst position that's happened at, per our grades jared maybe it's just us being homers here whatever is an a <laughs> i mean we're just grading based off of this performance and when the starters mm -hmm. were in it was pretty much flawless um now, Kyle, I will say this. We did have our first C.J. Stroud-led drive end up in a punt. It, I think it was it was his last drive, yeah, uh, which, was in the, which was in which was in the second half. Ohio yeah. State has still not punted in the first half since Akron, which yeah, was not C.J. Stroud. Yeah, that is, that is just a crazy step. It was to, the first drive about. of the second half per per Gangland. Yeah, that, that's that's just a crazy stat to think about, and and how well, how just how efficient Ryan Day has this offense clicking here. All right, let's get into some ask Slipcast questions here, Jared. You want, do we want to grade the coaching? Um, an A, yeah. an A. That's fine. Austin formation. Say you get forty carries a game to hand out to the team in a semi-competitive game. Say how say the final score is forty five to twenty eight. Tosh State wins. How would you distribute those forty carries? So those forty carries, I would say, I would say twenty, I would say twenty five to Henderson. Yeah, I would say twenty five to Henderson. I would give ten to Chop, and then give five to CJ Stroud. OK, uh, I wasn't even thinking about including the quarterback in that. Um, he just says 40 carries to hand out to the team. Um, let's see. I I'm he says semi competitive. Now, if we were talking about competitive competitive, we're, if you're talking about game on the line, I think I like your numbers, Kyle. Um, but if we're talking semi-competitive, I really don't want to take Henderson over 20. He's still a freshman. Yeah. I want to keep him healthy. I think 20 is a good number for, for Henderson. 
Um, if I have all of the running backs available, um, I probably want to give maybe 12 or 13. I'm making the math hard on myself here. 12 or 13 to, so let's just say 13 to chop. Let's give seven. Let's give seven to Master Teague and that's 40, right? So yeah, yes. something in that area. Okay. All right, fair enough. All right, gangland, here come here's a question from you. How do we feel about how do we Stuart, feel Stewart says I want to see them hand the ball to Dwan Jones. You know, I'd like to see it too. <laughs> yes. How do we feel about the Stroud comparison now? Uh the uh, Stroud pro I I did ask him. He, this is about a pro comp for CJ Stroud. Um I, I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Um, he has a really nice arm. It's not like a world class. No, see, I, I don't like Dwayne Haskins because I think Dwayne Haskins has better arm strength. Um, but but it, we aren't talking about bad arm strength by any means from CJ Stroud. Just Haskins arm strength was huge. Better arm strength than Andy Dalton. Be better arm strength than like Andy Dalton. Um, Gosh, I don't know. Um, he kind of maybe Aaron Roger E. Yeah, um, I'd say I would say Aaron Roger E. Uh, mm. I, I haven't put a ton of thought into that yet. And again, I really want to see him against some really good competition because right now he's just sort of hanging back in the pocket and slinging it. Because um, I think that's really all that's being required of him at the moment, which is fine, which mm -hmm. is great. Yep. I don't see a ton of his flavor coming through yet yeah uh austin asks what is the best comparison since we're doing comparisons what's the best comparison to uh trey uh, hundoson <laughs> so I, I i saw some other answers this was being discussed in the in the in the in the sloop cat discord so i saw some other answers being being tossed around and I saw Reggie Bush being tossed tossed around, and I think that's somewhat fair. Um, I and I saw Adrian Peterson getting tossed around, and I I see where that's coming from. Um, the the two names I I have to offer are one Marshall Falk. Uh, he does remind me a lot of Marshall Falk um, stylistically. He he will need to improve as a pass receiver to really earn those stripes. Um, and of course, I'm not saying he's as good because we're, we're taught uh, every name we're bringing up here are Hall of Famers practically, right? Reggie mm -hmm. Bush, not so much in the pros, but he's one of the best college running backs ever. Um so that's some of the names that popped to mind. And I know this is this is a bit weird. Um, here kind of reminds me of Fast Willie Parker, uh, who played for the Steelers for a while, which is to say he's an incredibly fast running back who is not afraid. People have a misconception of Willie Parker, like that he was some sort of scat back a la... Um, was Chris Joe was played for the Titans for a while is incredibly fast running back. Chris Johnson, is that what his name was? Yes. Yep. Gangland confirms. But no, that's not that's not true. Willie Parker, despite being an incredibly fast running back, knew how to break tackles and run between the ta and run between the tackles and get dirty yards and all of that. Um, so I, I kind of want to throw that out there as a comp as well. Mm hmm. All right, Gangland asks, um, the starting O-line gave up their first sack in a while last night. Should I take my finger off the panic button? Uh, th didn't they give up a sack week prior? Or not the week prior. Okay. Week prior was a bye week, but I feel like they, they tend to give up maybe about one sack a game, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. I could be, I could be mistaken. All right, we have Hoosier Buckeye Zach. Do you believe it is time for Henderson to exceed 30 plus carries no. as well as at least three targets minimum in the short pass game? No. Freshman running back. 
No, absolutely not. As Kyle pointed out earlier, high school is currently going into their playoffs. Like the high school season's almost over. And we're kind of at the halfway mark of college football. Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, you, the season gets longer. The hits add up. Now, he's doing a really good job not taking a bunch of hits <laughs> as far as that goes. Because well, he's just not touches. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you got to keep him fresh. You got to keep him protected. You, you can't you can't do to him what Trestle did to Marshall. Marshall. I almost said Marshall Falk. Maurice Claret. You know, Claret was beat up, missing games because of shoulder injuries and everything else. Um, no, you got to you got to keep him on a pitch count of sorts. Yep, agreed. Agreed, agreed, agreed. All right, another question from Zach. Gangland is panicking over one sack given up by the OL. Should we commence Operation Brown Paper Bag? No, no. I, I, I'm, not, <laughs> only, I'm only guessing at what that means, and no. <laughs> All right, Gangland, one last question here. Is last night an indicator of, of how much we will use our tight ends in bigger games? Um, I, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I've been asking myself the same thing. We saw Ohio state use the tight end a lot versus Rutgers, mm -hmm. but then completely forget about the tight end against Maryland and then come back to you. It just might depend upon what they're seeing in the scheme of the other team. Uh, yeah. that w would I'd, be my guess at this point. I, I feel like we, we do this every, every year, Jared. Where oh, oh, we got we got um the tight end got two touchdowns in this game the year of the tight end it's this year and then all of a sudden it just goes away whenever Ohio State plays stiffer competition I until I see it I'm I'm hesitant to say it but it's it, it's always nice seeing tight ends getting five plus catches and a pair of touchdowns in a game yeah for sure. All right, and I think I saw uh, Stewart ask a question here. Did Ryan Day hold back uh, hold back to dogs when he should have curb stomped those chumps? Uh, you know, when when they scored 44 in the first half, part of me was wondering if we were going to see evil Ryan Day. <laughs> because we saw him take some vengeance out on Michigan in the past. We saw him take some vengeance out on Maryland a few years ago over that Chase Young situation. Um, and because of all the noise Indiana made about, you know, they should have been representing the East and whatnot it, last year. Um, I, I was wondering if we were going to see evil Ryan day in, in mm -hmm. the second half, but, but he, it wasn't. He he called the dogs off. I want. I kind of wanted it too, Stuart. But it's a long season. There's a lot. There's a long way to go. And as much as it might be fun to do something like that, let's let's win the season. Let's get the guys rested. Let's focus on Penn State. There's a long season ahead. It's not. Exactly. It's not about scoring eighty points on Indiana. That's not. That's not going to get you. That's not going to get you anywhere. Yep. Exactly. All right. That is all the questions we have for today, Jared. Buckeye Zach says Michigan will see evil Ryan Day. You know, I maybe. I I think I think maybe. I think there's still some scores unsettled there. Mm -hmm. right, not, only, not only Duck last year, but he and Harbaugh got into some shouting matches on some phone calls during the course of the offseason season previous not not this off season but the off season previous to that like it, it, it you know georgia techs 222 should be concerned <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right kyle uh anything else nope that is it go ahead and take us out jared all right i want to encourage everyone to uh join our discord server um it's uh it's a fun community uh, we keep it policed. It's drama free. Um, there's no not. It's so much fun. There's not a lot of nonsense. Um, it's 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 a, it's a great time. Uh, to, it's a great place to hang out. Um, we send out news alerts in there. So if you're looking maybe to get news alerts, we try and, you know, 
We have a breaking news channel that you can follow, which, quite frankly, you could join the Discord server just for that breaking news channel, and you'd honestly be pretty happy if you had your alerts on and stuff like that. So, um, and it's just a fun place to hang out during game day. We have a bunch of fun. We have a bunch of fun, like bots and stuff in there, and everything else. It's we enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. Um, and if you want to join the premium sections of the Discord server, which you don't have to do, the Discord server is free, but there are premium sections of it. And you could join that uh, by for, for only three dollars a month uh, by going to patreon.thesloopcast.com and signing up for uh, the three dollar tier will give you all of the digital access that you want. Everything else gets you like merchandise and stuff like that. But as far as the digital content, you can listen to us as we record these live and chat uh, like these guys are doing down here. Uh you can get early access to episodes. Uh, we have a recruiting channel in the Discord. Um, we have the game day channel. We have a, a bunch of interesting channels in the premium section of the Discord. And you can, like I said, just come hang out. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, as I mentioned before, like Ohio high school, Football just ended, so this weekend is the start of the playoffs here, and I'm I'm sporting my my alma mater um, hat here when when the state title back in back in O three they're they fi they finished off the Clemson Grove Bulldogs finished off their season ten and O for their fourth straight conference uh, title looking looking to do um to do some damage this uh, this playoffs and if all works well. I think like if they win three games, they could possibly be playing um, Mad Canadians High School too. Oh yeah, no, sorry, I was there. There are a lot of shenanigans. I was I was reading the shenanigans taking on and something about me cheating. I've never cheated. I don't know what what <laughs> it is you guys are talking about, but I cheated nothing. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's it, Kyle. That's that's the end of today's show. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band called, I have it in the show notes. I just need to scroll up to the point in the show notes. Uh, they're called Stay Outside. Uh, they're a fun band and I'm playing them because on Tuesday night, which is, uh, either tomorrow night or tonight, depending upon when you're listening to this. And if you're listening to this, uh, later than the 26th, then I'm sorry, you missed it. Uh, but you can still listen to the song. Uh, they're playing at the Roomba Cafe, uh, which is in Columbus. Uh, it's how, how do I describe where the Roomba Cafe is? It's it's uh, east of North Campus. Does that make sense? Summit area. Um, so you can go you can go check out uh, this band on Tuesday night if you want to. Uh, so, like I said, if, you, if you're listening to this on the podcast version, uh, then just just hang around. Uh, you don't have to do anything except nothing. If you do nothing, you'll hear the you'll hear, you'll hear you will hear the song uh, for the YouTube folk. We can't play the song on YouTube, uh, but you can. Uh, there's a link down in the show notes where you can go and listen to this song. So you can go ahead and do that. And uh, with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Stay Outside. <laughs>